Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm Alex with this Cobb House, and I have some pretty interesting results to show you in this video regarding some Cobb test blocks. I'm going to show you the ratios and the materials that I used, and then show you how they've done under the weather for uh, over a month now. We constructed these test blocks back in early October. It's now late November, so they've had a good um, sitting outside in the weather under a lot of rain, a lot of freezing temperatures. Uh, so I'm going to show you how they did. They're, they're looking really good. So all the samples I'm going to show you in this video were made using the same type of subsoil but a different type of aggregate and different ratios. So the main difference between the mixes I'm going to show you are the aggregates. And this is an aggregate, locally here they call it CHAT, it's kind of an odd name. It's almost like a, a more fine version of crusher run gravel, it doesn't have the larger chunks of gravel in it. This I've found to be a very, very excellent aggregate for cob. And here we have your typical masonry sand, and the masonry sand as you can see is a lot more fine. Uh, doesn't have the large rocks in it or small rocks even. Uh, this is typically used for making mortars. Uh, so I'm going to show you the samples and the differences and you might see how the different aggregates come into play. Here are the four samples we made in our October workshop and you can see the ratios labeled on top. So I'm going to start from worst going down to best. So here I expected this to be the worst combination uh, but to be honest it's not a bad cob. There's a few things uh, that are not great about it. Uh, mainly the high aggregate ratio. This was two part sand to one part soil. That's quite a lot of um, aggregate at least with using the local soil here. It makes for a very sandy cob. Um, even when this is dry, you can rub the side and sand comes off of it. Um, when we were mixing this one, it was a very dry mix. You had to add a lot of extra water to really make it pliable and sculptable, um, which also makes it dry out slower because you have all that extra water and extra water can potentially lead to cracking in the walls as they dry. Um, this reminded me a lot of a cob you would make in North Florida with their local soils which are very sandy. Um, you have to make it extra wet and it dries out slower. You can build less per day. So this was not the best mix but again it works. It's a solid cob and it works. But we can get better than that. So. Our next one was two chat one soil. So we just switched out the aggregate type with this one, but it's the same ratio. And again, it has a lot of the same drawbacks. Um, it's a little sandy still, but not quite as sandy as using the masonry sand. Um, again, we had to make this one <clears throat> a little more wet to make it pliable. Otherwise it was just a bit dry and didn't uh, stack very well. Uh, so again it's going to dry out slower. Kind of has the same issues but I would say this one using the chat is slightly more strong and um, a little less sandy. Uh, now we go to a better ratio here um, and again the ratio is always going to depend on the type of soil you have but uh, most cases a one-to-one -one ratio will be good. Again you got to check your own local soil and test uh, using your own soil. But a one-to-one -one ratio is usually where you start anyway. Um, and this one turned out really well. This was one part masonry sand, one part soil. So here, this, this is a very good solid cob using a regular masonry sand. Um, this was very sculptable, pliable, didn't need to be too wet and it stacked high really well 
and uh, therefore dried <clears throat> in a good time. This is your traditional pop. Now here, this is actually my favorite one, and this is using that chat aggregate. Same ratio, we're just using chat aggregate this time. Um, this is my favorite overall, this chat aggregate. I know it's an odd name, um, but that stuff works really well. Uh, just has a really uh, varied spectrum of particle sizes. I really like the little small rocks. It just makes for a very uh, rigid and uh, stackable material. So, um, yeah, this stuff was really good, very pliable. I mean, you could sculpt it really well. Um, definitely a very solid, very good cob. I would say if you're going to do more of a artistic sculpting um, type of project with your cob though, I would use the masonry sand over this bigger aggregate. You're not going to have quite as much uh, level of detail with your sculpting with this stuff as opposed to a finer sand like that masonry sand. But if you're doing a building, if you're just building walls, this uh, this was a really good mixture. I really like that aggregate. Um, I definitely would recommend the chat aggregate over a, a regular crusher run gravel because I found that that gravel is just too big. Not that it doesn't work, but I think this is a very happy medium between something like a masonry sand and a crusher run gravel. This chat gravel works really well for a lot of reasons. So now I'm going to take you over to the dual wall test block. All right, so this is a test block demonstrating the dual wall cob insulation um, concept. So here we have 18 inches width of cob and I think it's uh, about six inches of straw clay insulation mix. And so what this gives you is an insulated cob wall. And I'll make a separate video later demonstrating how to actually construct these walls. You have to use a slip form system. I'm actually uh, gonna be using the slip form system for all my future cob buildings because it's really, really awesome for a lot of reasons, which I'll get into later. I apologize for the lighting here, it's not really great. I don't know if you can see quite clearly. These two sections are like fused together though. So this is not separated from the cob. They're actually interwoven where they meet. So um, we use that one part chat to one part soil again for this cob section. And this thing is solid. I mean, this is some of the most solid cob I've probably ever made. And this has been out here under a lot of weather for nearly two months now. Doesn't even have a scratch. I mean, you can't even see any erosion marks. And I'm really surprised about the straw clay being outside here under the weather for that much time too. I thought it would be having mold problems already, um, but there is no mold on this thing at all. There was initially when I first, um, we first took it out of the forms and created it, there was a bit of mold as it was drying, but since then it's been completely mildew, mold free, um, which I'm quite surprised because this thing's just uncovered out here. But uh, this is a, a good demonstration of a cob dual wall and uh, yeah, it's doing extremely well. I'm gonna leave it out here for probably a year and see how it all does over that much time, just out of curiosity. Um, but again, this is a, a really good cob mixture, that chat aggregate I found to be my favorite now. And then the dual wall system, 
just doing really well. All right, guys, I hope you found this video informative in some way. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try to get back to your comments as soon as I can. And um, let me know if you want to see any other kind of test blocks created and um, tested out under the weather or in other situations. And uh, see what I can do about that too. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.